Hello and welcome to a new episode of Ren 11 Unplugged with me, Sean, in my 996. And today we're going to be talking about how misguided are purists? Or, more importantly, have we got them all wrong? So, let's start with, well, important factor, important element about it. What is a purist? So recently I had a conversation with very good friends, Mike and Aaron from P Car Talk. Um, if you want to catch that Instagram live video, the card should be up now. And we were talking about the community as a whole and how welcoming it is and how warm people are and how we really want to be inclusive. Now, the Porsche community is, let's be honest, going to be quite broad anyway, because you have your people who like your classic vehicles, you do have your friends that um, like to tinker with them, and then you have people that, well, they call it this themselves, they like to ruin their cars. But that's the whole point, isn't it? We all mix and match, and it makes the community a very interesting hotbed of, of topic and visuals. But yet, there's a lot of anti-purist talk amongst people, mainly from folks who like to play around with their cars, whether it's lightly modified or something a lot more heavier. So let's look at that in a little bit more depth, shall we? Now. As we know, Porsche fandom has changed a lot, whereas if you were part of a club, it used to be mail order, and you'd get your stickers through the post, and you'd get a newsletter every so often, and that was it, you know. Some businesses still work in that way a lot of the time. Some are blended, so they do offer that, plus they have online presence, but the majority of the time, if you want to get your fix, you can get it from online, be it forums, although they are on the decline, be it Facebook groups, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, a whole variety of different avenues to, to sort of look and uh, get dreams, get ideas, get opinions, more on that in a moment. However, there has been quite a considerable change over the last 20 or so years with how we utilize the internet. Uh, more importantly, how we engage with people on the internet. And I'll be real honest with you, sometimes I feel quite disgusted with what I see on the internet, with people's opinions and how they actually bring them up. I'd like to think that we don't have just vile people everywhere. Uh, and just vile people in general, you know, because it makes for uncomfortable thinking that we have a lot of, well, people that aren't really nice populating a community as friendly and as warm as the Porsche community. However, some people just rile other people up, um, especially with their staunch opinions on, you know, what you can and can't do with a car. And it's upsetting overall. Like for instance, we have some people that like to chase horsepower on engines. And there's a, a lot of people that say, well, Porsche knew what they were doing when they made that, manufactured that engine, did that suspension, created the parts. They eked out every last horsepower or torque kilowatts whatever you want to talk about out of each engine so it's stupid to want to do it but you know it's the approach of how they go about saying it and a lot of the time it's belittling you're probably thinking yeah okay is this about internet trolling well Partially, I suppose, but more importantly about it, the 
whole purists commentary kind of came about through being online. Now, don't get me wrong, there's events and you have people that pass opinions at car events and it doesn't necessarily stick or, or stay just with Porsche mind. I've heard people's opinions when I've been to Volkswagen events and stuff, you know, oh, the car's not low enough or, you know, why did you go with those wheels? Oh, the colour, oh, checkbook car. So it's not isolated to that. However, it does seem to be quite a polarizing thing within the Porsche community. So let's, let's break it down a little bit. Are we dealing with just internet trolls who want to get a rise out of people? Or are we dealing with people that have little to no netiquette? You know, the etiquette of speaking on the internet? Could be a bit of both, maybe. But are they making people who love standard cars and want to strive for going for every, if they do a nut and bolt restoration, going with period correct bits? And hats off to those people that chase that dream of going back to a, like making the car look stock and, and immaculate and perfect. That's the, the desire within their, their, their Porsche passion. Who the hell are we to tell them otherwise? It's more the infringement on other people that grinds my gears. Let's go backwards a little bit. Remember I mentioned about those people that said that Porsche did everything it can to eke that extra bit of power out of those engines. So what's the point of modifying them for an extra 10, 15, 20%? Well, 10% would be great on an M96. Oh. Maybe it is very possible, but we just haven't looked at it correctly. I know someone who knows that. Anyway, why, if that's the case, do we have a thriving tuning industry worth billions, okay, globally? Surely that means that there, there, there must be an opportunity to, to get more power. There must be an opportunity to do more within the confines of what we have. I mean, suspension, let's consider that. Whatever you say, for me, I couldn't have my car riding like it was a KN. I had to ensure that the car was lower than what it was because it just looks so much better. And if you didn't have a Matchbox toy and push that car down onto your table or your floor as a kid just to see how good it looked when there was no wheel gap, then do you even car enthusiast? And that's it, isn't it? You know, it's about aesthetics, it's about performance, it's about achieving personalization. That's another thing. I'm gonna to touch upon a friend of mine's build. His name is Dan Smith. I've met him through Ren 11. He's awesome. I really like him because he just doesn't care. He does things for what he wants to do. Although he does use the term, and apologies for using this, and, and, and it's not directing hate, but I understand why he does it. He directs it saying, oh, you know, purists are gonna hate this. And we also have a mutual friend called Richard who likes to keep his cars pretty standard overall. Um, and he takes it in jest. And that's the best thing about it because we can, we can have a little laugh around it. What Dan's done with his car, he's dropped it. It can scrape over certain surfaces. It looks amazing. And if you don't think it looks amazing, well, fair enough, you're entitled to your opinion. But his car looks like a concept drawing. And when you consider concept cars or concept drawings, they're always with over-exaggerated wheels. You know, the, the wheels are flush with the arches. They're very striking, very bold, very simplified almost. There's not much fuss going on with the car, with the design. And then you look at the actual physical concepts when they come out, they look staggering. The Taycan as a concept was just, or the Mission E as it was called, looked stunning. It was a wicked looking car. I loved it. I loved the look of it. I thought it was, it was perfect. Now, truth be told, it doesn't look too dissimilar to the concept, 
but you can tell there's been a lot of differences in there. Still pretty low, but it could still be dropped a couple of inches without a problem. But that's the thing, concepts versus reality, there is a change. They have to because there's laws, there's regulations, the reality of our road surfaces. Now, I don't know what it's like in certain parts of the world. I can only uh, talk about what I've experienced in the UK. And we, are, we spend so much money on road tax, but none of that road tax seems to find its way onto the road systems. So we have horrible potholes and road surfaces that don't even match they update it or fix it they look a state I mean I'm just looking at this road now and it's pants so I get why they have to have the car slightly raised I get why they've got constraints especially when you consider co2 emissions and whatnot when the cars become a reality I know that I can't we can't really talk about that because it's a full electric vehicle but you get what I mean how do we deal with people with staunch opinions that differ from our own we have a few options one is to go on the defensive attack call them names revert to playground behavior that's one methodology and hey do you know what if that's your style cool do it antagonize wind them up get your fishing rods out and get a little nibble we do have another option though for me, it's always rung true, and this is a kind of what I do in general. I invite conversation. You know, a good debate can't be beaten. I had a great conversation with someone over a statement I made on the internet the other day, and I loved it because he explained his thought process behind how he reacted to what I said. It wasn't anything big, it was just uh, uh, about something a, a business had done which kind of shot themselves in the foot. And that was a bad bit of road. And what I loved was the fact he was so honest, yet very clear in his uh, approach and, dare I say it, polite. I admit sometimes you can mistake something what someone says on the internet. I've been guilty of that. I'm sure everyone else who's watching has been guilty of that from time to time. If you don't think you're guilty of that, then you need to have a little question with yourself and be a bit more reflective. Yet, you know, it was great to be able to read something from someone who had an opinion and it made perfect sense. And it invited conversation. It made us follow each other. Uh, on Instagram, but obviously official friends now, but it was wonderful, and I love that. I love the, the fact that we could have difference of opinions, yet still be respectful of each other. And that's the thing, if you see someone on the internet make a comment about, oh, you know, I can't believe you've ruined that car, or, or even someone who modifies cars, why are you dropping it? having a laugh with friends is different to going on the attack you could say F off you could and, and here's something you could say well thanks for your opinion let me to explain to you why I did this why I came up with this concept of, of, of what I did with my vehicle because there's a thought process behind it and invite the conversation hey, do you know what? You probably won't change their opinion. You won't change their mind. And this goes both ways. Why haven't you lowered it? But if it invites conversation and it makes someone appreciate you as a person, then do you know what? Do it. Life is too short to hold grudges with people you may never ever meet. The internet is a bad place and a scary place. Or it can be. So just be cool with each other. Talk, be friends, be merry. We're all here because of one thing, and that's Porsches. Doesn't matter if it's a 924, a 914, 918, 911, 356, whatever. Cayenne, McCann, 
we're all here because we love this wonderful brand for Stuttgart that brings people together. I know we've got a community that has an awful lot of love and likes to include people. Let's ensure that we don't give internet trolls the airtime they deserve. We welcome the purists, we welcome the modifiers, we welcome everything in between. Because I don't know about you, if I was just looking at the same car times 20, I may as well be at a dealership rather than at a car show. Thank you so much for watching Ren 11 Unplugged. Have a look up here if you want to see the conversation I had with Mike and Aaron from PCAR Talk, where we talk about this more in depth. Have a look up here if you want to talk or see the talk between me and Mr. No Wheel Gap, Drew, from Cool Collective. And if you liked everything that you saw and want more, click over here.